And just to let you know, uh, we did post our ye uh, yesterday's forum and the one from Tuesday already on uh, the page where we list all our virtual forums. So you can, your family members or, or whoever didn't watch yesterday and uh, on Tuesday can view those those forums. And uh, please, Beth, go ahead and talk about moving. Sure. You got it. Um, before I talk about moving, Kayla, is there any way to uh, turn off the chat? Um, because I just find it really just like I get yes. distracted it when is, I keep seeing the messages already pop up. It's already yes. disabled. Perfect. So Thank you. Okay. So hi, everyone. My name is Beth McGuire Fredericks. I'm the Senior Assistant Dean of Students and I'm the Director for Residence Life. Uh, I'm going to talk with you about what I imagine are your most pressing questions. I'm going to give you information about what check-in day will look like. So uh, first and foremost, if you have not seen the check-in uh, check assignment instruction letter from your student, uh, please ask them to forward that to you. So as most of you know, the, uh, all of the information goes to a student's Pride email account. They have been inundated with information from our office, from the provost office, the academic side, the residential side. There's a lot of information to, uh, to keep track of. Um, and then we're sending information about, you know, check the Safe Start page and updates are provided. So we know that this is a time where um, we are trying to provide as much information, but we also know that that means that um, it's like an overload. You know, it just feels overwhelming to receive that much information. But the check-in assignment letter provides um, much of the information that you'll have questions about. Uh, check-in is in a staggered approach. So uh, we start check-in on the 15th, and then we have check-ins on the 15th. Uh, our international population comes in on the 16th. Uh, the 17th is a check-in day, the 19th, the 21st, and then we are also checking in students the week of, uh, the first week of classes. Um, as students have received information that their state is now part of the travel advisory, uh, which requires a 14-day quarantine, our uh, check-in dates have gotten longer and longer because students will need to quarantine for two weeks off campus before they can arrive. And that means that many of them will be arriving after classes begin. So um, typically the governor adds uh, more advisory states or takes advisory states off on Tuesdays. Um, so this Tuesday we found out about Hawaii, we found out about the Virgin Islands, Rhode Island was taken off the list. So there's constantly this kind of add, delete, uh, which causes questions, concerns, and lots of chaos in a world that's already pretty chaotic. Um, so check-in day itself, we have staggered check-in so that there is minimum density on campus. Uh, so on the 15th, there are about 550 students that are checking in. They're checking in between the hours of nine and four. Some of our check-in days are nine to 7 p.m. and some are nine to 4 p.m. based on the, uh, the time that, or based on the amount of students that we're checking in. So um, the important things, the really, really important things to remember, each student has scheduled a, a check-in time. So they have not, they've been provided their date that they have to be in, um, but they were able to schedule the time that works best for them and whoever is helping them onto campus. Whatever they, they put down as their schedule, so if they scheduled, you know, they were in sorry, if they were given uh, August 15th and they set up a, an appointment for 9.30 a.m., that means that 9.30 a.m. is their testing appointment. Everything starts with testing. So they will be expected to be here at 9.30 a.m. and available to be tested at 9.30 a.m. So their, the time, the date, are extremely important that you adhere to those because without being tested, the student will not be able to move through to get their ID, to move through to get their key. Uh, there is going to be a receipt that um, every, a wristband that every student will receive that has been tested. They will not be permitted into the next step of check-in without that wristband on. So everything is to make sure that testing occurs first, 
they get their ID second. Um, we provide them with their, their keys to their fall assignment. Uh, they then get some, some um, safety equipment, Hofstra masks, uh, sanita you know, hand sanitizer, um, some t-shirts, you know, things to kind of welcome them to the university. And then they move through to the, uh, to the hall to check in. One, one, one person is permitted to, um, to go with them into the residence hall. And um, we ask that check-in occurs within, you know, that, that you settle in within two hours of arri arriving at the, at the residence hall. Um, some other pointers that we have about arriving is not to arrive with uh, a ton of stuff. Um, remember that it is a truncated semester, you know, November 24th. So there's not, you know, there's no reason to kind of bring those heavy, bulky, you know, down jacket, jackets, um, you know, things that are like winter, winter wear. Um, if you have luggage that has wheels on it, or if you have a hand cart yourself, there will be blue moving bins that are available to all students to use, but we don't have one for every single student. We don't have 2,000 blue bins on our campus or 2,500 or 3,000. Um, everyone, you know, those will be utilized, um, you know, as available. We will have cleaning supplies and wipes so that those can be wiped down um, between uses. But if you have a hand truck or if you have kind of luggage wheels, those are definitely going to be desirable to, to bring in with you. Excuse me, I have a question. Okay. Um, my question is, you said that the students, I understand they need to go and get tested if they are assigned time they need to wait until the test results are in. If they show up with a negative test, can they proceed through the process? No, so um, all students, regardless of whether they have uploaded a negative test result or have had a negative test result, um, will need to be tested on arrival to the university. So everyone is being tested. And how long is this process before, is as a parent, I don't wanna hang around the campus too long. I'd like to get him moved in and get myself out of there since I've got a ferry reservation to get off Long Island. So how long is this process going to be so I can plan accordingly? Sure, so the, uh, the testing itself uh, only takes 10 minutes. Um, and then uh, I would say to, from the process of getting tested to getting your ID to getting your um, keys would take 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, and then moving into the halls, um, would probably take another, depending on how much stuff you have, um, would take another hour or so. I would give yourself probably three hours for the for the whole process. Um, if you're, a, you know, if you want to be there while they unpack and do all of the things, then obviously that's going to take a lot longer. But if you're just looking to kind of here's your stuff, get it in the bin, I'll, uh, you know make sure that everything is said and then you head out that shouldn't take more than three hours so in other words they don't have to um student doesn't have to wait for the test results they can get their keys and just go move in that's true that is correct they will not receive their test results for about uh 24 to 36 hours um is the time that we uh that we are seeing test results kind of come back um and uh, those will be what happens is if a student um, if a student tests negative they will typically get a text or an email um, saying you know we have your results they've tested you've tested negative if a student by some chance uh, tests positive then that information will be provided to student health and student health would outreach to the student to deliver that information um, you know individually and then provide information about what, what steps are next. And the steps that would be next is that the, the student would either go to uh, isolation housing, which is separate and apart from their fall assignment. So they would take what they would need for about two weeks um, and they would then live in that space and their care would be managed by student health or they could make arrangements with a uh, family to quarantine and isolate at home, um, which, you know, they would certainly be more comfortable at home, um, but they would make arrangements to isolate at home and then their care would be managed through their 
um, you know, their practice, you know, their general practitioner along with student health, and they would uh, talk about, you know, proper and appropriate return back to campus. You mentioned the student's going to get a key and an ID. Would they get an ID if they were a returning student still? No, they wouldn't get an ID if they were a returning student. They should have their ID already. If they, you know, if their ID uh, broke or is cracked, they can get a replacement, but they wouldn't need to get a, an ID. An ID is just for the, the uh, new students, first time new students. Once a student is placed in quarantine, can they do remote learning? Yes. Okay. What if a professor has sent out an email stating that you're not doing any remote learning? What happens in that case? So um, that that would have to be every professor if they're if they're in quarantine they would have to make some accommodations. Okay. Um, so that would be handled through their academic advisor. Um, okay. Yeah, it's not something that I have a, a ton of information on other than the faculty member would have to work it out with the student. I have a question. Um, my son is quarantined with my brother in Massachusetts, and my brother would be bringing him to campus. But sure. originally, my name was placed on the list to be the person. Does my brother, and my, my son said he had spoken to someone. I just wanted to make, sh every, make sure that everything was OK. Um, my brother has his Massachusetts license. Um, yep. Is that, will that, like, what? What would a student need to prove that he's been quarantined for those two weeks? So the, uh, the student, when they go for testing, there will be a survey that each student has to affirm. Um, and that is, they do that at, when they arrive for testing. So it's okay. through the testing site that they fill out this questionnaire um, and affirm that they have done so, done so appropriately. Um, and then for any guests arriving on campus, which uh, his, it, it's his uncle, you said? His uncle, my brother, yeah. Right, sure, your brother. So, he, so his name's different than my name, so yep. he could just, you know, anyway, so there wouldn't be any problems that way. No, no. Uh, I mean, to be very honest, we, uh, when we're dealing with uh, 18 and 19 year olds, we expect the, uh, the atmosphere and, and things to change quite often with our population. <laughs> so we are prepared for, uh, for changes to, you know, who's coming and okay. uh, right. The one is, so that is something to, uh, to note though. Um, if students, students really need to arrive during their testing time, if they right. arrive after the testing center has closed, uh, they will have to go to isolation housing. So right. that is very undesirable for any for anybody right. to go into because it's they would have to then move their belongings twice. Mm -hmm. um, and then they have to go for, um, you know, they have to go for testing at the next testing date. We are not doing testing every single day. So the delay for someone, um, you know, to to uh, to move into their false space could could be significant. So, okay. No, that's fine. Um, he's got an early time, so he'll be okay. Awesome. And my brother's responsible, so he'll be perfect. I had a question about. I sure. know that only one person can help with the move in, but is it is it only one person allowed on campus? or could more than one person come my my daughter will need help moving in and mm -hmm. i need to drive her up there but i was hoping to bring my son to help with the actual move in i would not go into the dorm i would just wait in the car and he would help her move in is that a possibility that's yeah that that's fine we so we understand that you know obviously families they want to share in the experience with the move-in process and seeing the space and all of the things that come with it. Um, but we, you know, we're trying to balance the safety of the residence hall itself. That's, that's and, really not the you know, goal here. It's yeah. just, I, I have an injury right. in my arm and I can't sure. lift things. So I just want someone to be able to really help her. Yep. Um, so that's, that'll be fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. My son's arriving on crutches. He broke his leg this summer. Um, uh, he's given a date of the 22nd. Is that accurate? Because you didn't mention that as one of the dates. Yeah, the 22nd is, um, so the 22nd is a date that we have now created for students who are unable to make the date that they were previously right. um, assigned we to. to push so. it back because of, yeah. 
his surgery yeah. was last week. Um, he'll still get tested though. He doesn't have to go to quarantine or I'm that day. He'll be able to be tested. Yes. Okay. And, it, and okay. he's definitely going to need help moving in, but he can still only have one person with him. Is that correct? It is correct. Um, he's coming in on the 22nd. Do you, what building is he going into? He's a sophomore. I don't know off the top of my head. It got changed over the summer. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, we can certainly, uh, you know, assist with uh, the staff that we have on site. There will be multiple staff that are on site to assist. So, you know, we would certainly make sure that we got a blue bin for him and, um, you know, helped him with the staff that's on site. We have multiple kind of volunteers that are helping every day. We got people helping who are allowed. Can you just add, Beth, am I correct that two parents can uh, come uh, and drive on the campus, but one at a time can be mm -hmm. in the residence hall? So if you yep. if you bring, uh, you know, an able-bodied person with a student and you're two of you, you have to alternate coming into the, into the residence hall. Okay. Thank you. Of course. I have a question. Once a student has a positive test, Mm -hmm. How soon after do you retest them? Because you don't know whether at the beginning, the end, or where they're at. Uh, I don't exactly know. Um, student health would, would manage that. So um, once a student tests positive, they would be, you know, they would be moved to isolation housing. And then student health and the Department of Health manages the care and the follow-up uh, for that, you know, for that case, for that student. Um, so it's, it's not something that uh, I have specifics to, um, but student health can be contacted if you have specific questions about that type of a scenario. Thank you. Of course. Can I, can I ask a not a moving in question? Um, yeah. This is, because we live far away, um, you know, I plan my hotel reservations pretty far ahead. Um, parents weekend right at the moment, is that still up in the air or is that something that's probably because it's the first weekend in October not going to happen? Um, I'll start, Beth, and if you can add, uh, we do not have an official word from the university whether or not this will be in-person event. Uh, to tell you the truth, personally, I uh, just been listening to New York State Governor Cuomo talk about large gatherings, and they're still forbidden uh, in New York State. Right. I truly don't expect this to be on-campus event. And I expect this uh, the the family weekend to be either virtual uh, only virtual events or to be rescheduled. But again, we didn't get the official word on that one. Okay, thank you. Yeah, some things to uh, to note uh, about the residence halls and if parent um, you know parent family weekend is um, you know if people are coming to campus. The, there is a restriction to guests in the residence halls. Um, so there are no guests whatsoever that will be permitted in the residence halls for the fall semester. And we know that that's restrictive, um, but it's the, you know, it's for the, the abundance of caution to ensure that we don't have, uh, you know, people from different areas kind of coming in. And that also includes students from other residence halls will not be permitted into um, the friend in the residence hall of another friend. So we've have, we have multiple tents that have been set up all across campus and those will have tables and some chairs and some different, you know, areas in which students can meet and gather in outdoor spaces. So that's how they're going to, uh, to kind of utilize that. But say you do live far away, and if I was planning on um, being in that region, and I know there's the quarantine thing, and we do live in a state that's quarantined, um, but the chance, and because I'm trying to figure out how to just get to Massachusetts and then have him come up there via train or something, mm -hmm. but, um, but could you stop by and pick up your child um, on campus, not go in the dorms, but sure. you could take them out to dinner, you could, so none of that is prohibitive. 
No, it's not prohibited, but we, uh, you know, so a lot of this is we ask students to act with an abundance of caution for their, for the, you know, community members that they're going back to. Um, so, you know, mask wearing and, and in our area, you will see that m many of the establishments that you go into, you have to wear a mask anyway. So we just, uh, you know, we ask that students are following those safety precautions because it's, you know, they're large buildings. They're, um, you know, some of, some of our communities are smaller, kind of 50 people in a building. Um, and then some of them are towers where you have, you know, 150 students sharing elevators and laundry rooms and those types of things. So it's, it's all about, you know, keeping the safety of yourself and, and your community members. You know, and myself and my team live in the halls too. So I live in a residence hall with my family. And so do my, um, you know, most of my team uh, live in the residence halls too. So their community is our community. Um, I answered the uh, COVID test results upload in the chat feature. Um, uh, please email me at parents at house.edu if anything is unclear. I can I can give you more more instru instructions. But when you when your student does a pretest at home, uh, please upload those results as soon as you have them. Even if the doctor tells you it's going to be like long wait, 14 days, three weeks. Whenever you have those results, please uh, ask the students to uh, scan and upload them into the portal. Uh, there is a question, Beth, about uh, moving in on 21st and the roommate is moving in on 15th. Since roommate is here, can uh, the roommate help with the moving in of the other student? That's fine. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. I would like to mention the uh, travel advisory states and quarantine and, and, and the rest. Uh, if you are coming from a, a travel advisory state uh, and you would like to enter any building on campus, you would have to have uh, a quarantine, will have to have quarantined uh, with your student 14 days prior to moving in. Uh, this, is, this is the rule. Um, do you have any other questions? I don't see any other questions. Okay, we have another one. If a student's roommate is beginning the semester online due to travel restrictions, will a new roommate be put into the room or will the room be held for the student in a travel advisory state? Sure, so um, the, the room will be held for the student in the travel advisory state uh, unless the student um, cancels their, their fall assignment with us. Um, so we do have some students who have said, I'm gonna stay home until the advisory is lifted. Um, but we just don't know when the advisory will be lifted. So our policy and procedure is that students have to arrive on campus by the first week of classes. If they don't, then we call them to say, do you still plan to arrive? Why haven't you arrived? Um, and our practice is usually to cancel their housing if they haven't arrived by that time. If a student says to us, I'm, you know, I'm kind of waiting it out, we will hold the space. Um, but depending upon how many students that affects, the, um, the refund schedule for housing has been adjusted this year. So uh, it used to be the first week of classes was 100% refund, second week was 75, third week was uh, 50, and the fourth week was 25. And then after that, it was 0%. This year, we're doing two weeks of 100% refund. Um, so we, we will make sure to follow up with students before September 6th, which is the last day for 100% refund. Because if by September 6th, the travel advisory is still not been lifted and you're still not on campus, then it's really not, it, it's not advisable for us to, to let you pay for that space if you're not using it. So we would likely cancel the housing. And then if the advisory is lifted and you wanna come back to campus, we will certainly get you, you know, um, we'll certainly accept, you know, your housing fee and get you back into housing. 
but we don't want to we don't want to have anyone pay for something that they they can't physically use the other thing is that um, as a residential student you're required to be on a meal plan so if you're not using that meal plan we just don't want um you know families to have kind of paying for things that they're not using so we will work with those families to the best of our ability to make sure that a space is here you know obviously we will have a space available um, but we don't want to we don't want to have you pay for something or have the refund be less than it should be after a certain date. Thank you, Beth. Um, what do family members need to bring uh, to campus? Any ID? And how do they prove that they quarantined? So the uh, proof of quarantine is uh, a process through the um, testing site, and that will be a question questionnaire that they will have to um, affirm and fill out and attest to. Um, and then what was the other question that you said, Bronca? I'm sorry. Do parents and family members need a, an, an ID to come yes. together? Yes. So um, not only an ID, but a, a government issued photo ID. Um, so license, uh, learner's permit, passport, um, it, that is required for testing. I know that some uh, some yeah, students have. I'm sorry to interrupt you. The question was not for students. It is for parents. Oh, parents. gotcha. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so just a photo ID. What about for the quarantine? You said for the parent. You said to prove that you've quarantined to go to the testing site. But are the parents? I didn't think the parents were allowed in the testing site. No, so this is for the students only. So how do we prove that we've quarantined to allow to move our children into their dorms? Sure. I will try to answer this. So the parents will not follow the same procedure as students. Students will go to the testing site by themselves. Parents are not allowed. But I'm going to share the screen and show you what parents need to complete before stepping foot on campus and on the same day that you're arriving. And this is right on the Safe Start. This is the home page for the Safe Start. If you scroll down and click on Visitor Guidelines and Mandated Health Screening, this is what every family member accompanying a student for the move-in should complete. This is the blue button, Submit the Mandatory Health Screening. Please do this on the day that you're coming. Um, that's required and, and, and really nothing else. We, we really truly uh, do this on an honor system. We uh, trust that when you tell us that you've completed your, your quarantine that you've done that. And this is just because we don't have staff to check all of you and, 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 and do the background check. We just don't have that. But we all have to follow New York State uh, guidelines and, and regulations. So. Um, you know, we, we trust that you will be truthful about in your answers. Thank you. Um, the question, Beth, is my son has a student permit. Is that a good idea or does he need to bring his passport for identification? A uh, student permit, if uh, as long as it has a photo on it and it, that'll be fine. Do all visit to, to wear masks on campus? Are, I'm sorry, say that one more Are time. Are all visitors required at all times to wear a mask on campus? They absolutely are. And uh, so one thing that, um, that will be going out tomorrow to all residential students is updates to the, the Guides of Pride, which is our community standards document, um, which has some, um, which has some pretty strong language in regards to um, not adhering to that policy. So they, uh, it is, it will very quickly become a, um, you have to move out of the residence hall if you do not uh, abide by policy. Um, so the university is taking it extremely seriously. Now we know that this is not, you know, this is not common practice for any of us. I mean, I've been on campus all summer. I haven't interacted with a lot of people. There are times when I forget my own mask and I'm like, oh, I forgot my mask and I have to run back in. Um, but we're all just gonna have to get back into the habit of making sure that we have them with us all the time, you know, in, in any bag that we use or, you know, um, 
uh, disposable ones in, in our car, in our knapsack, whatever it is. Um, so if a student, you know, if a student has like their mask underneath their chin and somebody says, you gotta keep your mask on and they're like, oh, forgot and they put it back up. We're not going to, we're not going to be like, you know, you're, you're going to, you know, you're going to have a judicial hearing and we're going to, um, you know, we're going to throw you out of housing. But if a student does that twice, then, then we're going to have a meeting with them and tell them that it's, it's, you know, this is not the place for them to be. Uh, if a student says like, um, I'm not putting my mask on, I'm walking outside, then that would be an absolute violation of our, our, our policy. So we will very quickly adjudicate those matters and uh, removal from housing will be, um, will be a very swift and um, a very swift action that the university will make. And we expect all of our pride members to uh, just to care for each other. We, we put masks, not just only for us, but for others too. So uh, the rule is mask is on in all indoor spaces, every building. If you are entering a building, you have to have a mask on. You have to have a mask on outdoors if you are unable to socially distance, six feet, two meters. Um, so if especially uh, during the moving time, it, the best policy is to have the mask on. Uh, I, I am reading uh, Shannon's um, uh, message and, and this is true. Um, the New York State, New York City does checkpoints coming into New York City. It's really New York City, not New York State. And they will fill out the form for you or get the entry form for online before you come into the state. It's true on the New York State Travel Advisory site. You will note, please read this carefully because this is New York State regulations. You will have to complete a form online. And I think that there is a, a question about quarantine right there. Yeah, Shannon says receipt from, for quarantine location and negative code test available with, uh, with you. So that means, that means that New York State requires you to have uh, some proofs of, of, of uh, quarantine. Please check the New York State uh, advisory, I mean, travel advisory uh, page. We have a question, uh, Beth, from a commuting parent. When do commuting students get their ID cards and when do they get parking permits? I'll try to answer this because I know that commuting student services will send emails to commuting students in new, new commuting students, informing them when they can uh, come and get the photo ID and then the ID card on campus. Uh, and then the parking permits are done by public safety. They will have designated areas, I think, on campus. Beth, is that so? Do you have any news on that? Yeah, that's my understanding too, is that um, the, the office for commuting students is sending out emails in batches um, to, to schedule appointments for that. So when they go for, and they will then be able to get their uh, parking permits and IDs there too. Thank you. Uh, the students, the question is, can students walk outside without mask on? Yes, if they are socially distanced, yes. And we do have beautiful intramural fields. We have great open spaces students can use without mask on, but they have to socially distance. Uh, if they're outdoors, uh, they're st the, the rule is they're six feet apart. Uh, another question is about uh, gyms are closed. Yes, New York State has our gyms still closed. Are students allowed to walk around around the campus for some physical activity and fresh air and are they supposed to wear masks while walking running? Again, if the, uh, there is no congestion, if it's uh, open space and you can and students can socially distance, they don't have to wear a mask. But please, mm -hmm. I, would, I would advise any student to, to, to take the mask with them. Yeah, most of the students that we see, um, that I see running by my apartment <laughs> most days, um, have their mask, you know, under their chin or on their wrist so that they can easily put it, put it on when they need to. Uh, I don't know the answer to the question if the face shields are uh, allowed instead of masks. I don't know, Beth. Mm, no, um, face shields are not a, uh, are not uh, something that can be used in lieu of a mask. Uh, the mask has to be, has to be worn. Um, so I see 
questions about residential students who want to have a car on campus. Um, so where so where they should park on move-in day? Move-in day is really uh, open. You know, you can you're going to park in any of the residential lots. Uh, parking passes will be distributed. Um, you know, there'll be emails that are sent about that, but you can have a car on campus as early as your first semester as a first year student. Um, if you're a returning student, make sure that you have your parking uh, pass from, from last semester. Uh, I, you know, I think in some scenarios they are going to just utilize old passes so that people don't have to come in and out to get new ones. Um, so that's how they're doing it. I would like to answer the questions about whether or not family members can walk on campus and maybe tour the campus. You're very welcome to do so with, ma I would suggest with mask on just because of the congestion. Uh, and you can certainly walk on campus. As, uh, the eateries on campus will be open, but uh, we highly encourage you to find off campus places to eat. And the reason being is that occupancy rates in all our eating areas is 50%. It's, it's much reduced. So we expect both the lines for the food and lines for, you know, for the seats. So, um, um, and then also please allow students Throughout the semester, students have priority in getting the food. There were questions about masks. Uh, students will be receiving um, a bag of three. I think, is it two or three? I'm not sure, I forget. Kayla, do you remember? Three. Three, um, three masks that are uh, washable and reusable and then a, uh, a hand sanitizer. All of the the residence halls have um, hand sanitizer everywhere. We have um, wipes for bins. We have wipes for the kitchen. Um, they are Hofstra logo masks. And um, I'm just trying to think what else we oh we have temperature scanners uh, in each of the residence halls. So uh, and a student is able to. Um, walk up to it's like a little iPad and it will take their temperature immediately. So it's it's one of those um, measures where a student, if they're not feeling well, they don't have a thermometer, um, even though we are looking to give those out too. Um, but if they don't have one accessible, they could go up to this little iPad and have their temperature scanned immediately. Um, and once it's, you know, and, and if it says something like, you know, your you do have a temperature, um, then it just provides information about contacting student health. You know, so it is not a, a fail safe. Obviously, students who are, have just been running um, come into a building and kind of scan their temperature. They're going to, you know, they, they could uh, read as a higher temperature. Um, but it is, it is another preventative measure that we have available for our students. And they'll be in the residence halls and then also in different locations across campus. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Beth, if you re uh, respond to this one, but where do resident students get their parking passes? I think first they have to get the ID, correct? Yes. Um, so student public safety is still working out how that will be uh, distributed, but it looks like it'll be distributed on the check-in days in the arena. Uh, the question is, is the face shield not allowed because it's a mandate or a Hofstra policy? This is Hofstra policy. Uh, Hofstra will be yeah, supplying masks. Uh, and yes, uh, I, I received a lot of family questions about whether or not parents can come to campus during the move-in or later to just pick up their student and then go off campus to eat or to shop. Yes, you are very welcome to do that. So I, I just wanted to say something about that, um, Branka. We, um, because your student is being tested as they arrive, we ask that they limit their exposure outside of campus. So um, if you are going to shop, if you're going to get something to eat, we just really ask that uh, you know it is in the small family group that they're with, and then. Um, you know, and practice as uh, as much you know precaution as possible because we're testing them on arrival, and we don't want them we don't want them 
going to you know other locations until their test results come back because if they are positive then we want to make sure that their exposure uh, has been limited the bookstore will be open that day and also please limit uh, student travel to the travel advisory states uh, even if if they have to there is a wedding or a birthday or uh, some important family event, uh, please note that the students will need to quarantine off campus uh, prior to coming to, back to campus. Uh, so it's really not advisable to go back to a travel advisory state. So there's questions about um, whether students can leave campus, uh, off campus jobs during the semester. You know, those are what we, we want students to limit their um, their kind of exposure. Uh, so we want them to act as as safely as they can. But we know that students need jobs, and we know that students have jobs, and they have other commitments, and they have family and friends that may be off campus. So we want them to. Uh, we can't prohibit them. We're not going to shut the doors at a certain point. We're not going to say like, if you don't come back at by 12 midnight, we're going to, you know, you, you can't swipe in. It, it is all the things that we want. We hope that they will practice and we hope that they will do, but we cannot prohibit them from going off campus, participating in an off campus event, going, you know, going to a job. Um, they, we just ask that they practice the safety that will best ensure that when they come back to campus, that uh, they are doing so safely. And Beth, that's the most important question. Do you do, does Hofstra provide toilet paper in our students? <laughs> <laughs> we do. We uh, each, uh, we provide toilet paper. Um, they, to, toilet paper is usually found in the laundry rooms. Um, or in the towers, uh, they will be switched out by the custodial staff. Um, cleaning supplies will be available in, um, in bathrooms, but you should always bring your own. You should always have extra supply. Um, they will not, what the university provides will not be restocked. It's just kind of like a, you know, get you started kit. Um, so please provide cleaning supplies for your student um, so that they have enough, especially, and hand sanitizer, any type of like wipe, um, masks, disposable, washable, you know, the three that we provide are great. Um, but I mean, I remember when I was in college, I didn't, I didn't do laundry every week. <laughs> you know, it was, I was lucky if I did laundry every three weeks. Um, so just making sure that your student has a, a supply of masks that, uh, you know, that will get, get them through a couple of, you know, a couple of weeks. Uh, Beth, what if a student has heavy items to bring into the residence halls? Is there anybody from our staff that will help them? Unfortunately, no. There is, uh, our staff will not, um, will, not only will we not touch heavy items, we will not touch expensive items. So, you know, if you want help kind of moving a computer or a TV or a gaming system, that's not us. <laughs> we are not, uh, we're not touching those items. These are students that are assisting with, uh, with um, check-in and uh, there is no situation in which we would uh, help, you know, we would put them in a scenario where they could hurt themselves or damage items that are expensive. So the things that they might help with uh, on a, you know, during a regular check-in would be bedding, clothing, stuff like that. But um, for right now, during, you know, during a pandemic, uh, staff are not going to touch other people's belongings. Um, so my advice would be, if you have something that you can't lift, I would not bring it. Uh, Beth, uh, if, uh, you know, in, in the past, the RAs and RDs would go, do floor meetings in person. Will there be any in-person um, activities in residence halls this semester? Uh, probably not in the residence halls, but we are planning to do programs outside of the residence halls. So um, because of the capacity limits that we have for our main lounges, our kitchens, uh, we'll be doing those types of programs outside in the fresh air 
So uh, there will certainly be programs and engagement opportunities. They, uh, those that will be in person will be outside and then the rest inside will be virtually. Um, there is a question that on Hofstra Safe Start page says the visitors must be approved because before coming on campus. Beth, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not aware of that rule. Uh, I think it might have to do with vendors. Uh, so vendors that uh, come to campus um, have to be approved, but um, I don't know what that's in reference to. I can certainly look into that. Mm, will lounges be open inside the residence halls? The lounges will be open. Uh, they will have capacity limits in them. So, you know, there will be chairs that have been removed. So uh, a lounge that could have fit, you know, 25 students will now fit probably eight students. Um, so chairs have been removed. If chairs were not removed, then we have placed, uh, you know, kind of tape or stickers on them to say, you know, this chair cannot be utilized. Uh, same thing for um, kitchens in the residence halls. We have removed the chairs from the kitchens so that you know groups cannot gather. Uh, Beth, we uh, again have a question about will residential students be allowed to have visitors? Can you just repeat what you said before? So there will be no visitors that are allowed into the residence halls at all. The only, vis the only people that can be in a student's um, suite are those occupants of the suite. So if they're, that means they, in their, in their space, in their bedroom, they can only have their roommate in their bedroom. In their suite, they can only have their roommate and their two suite mates uh, in their suite. There are no visitors from other, um, um, other rooms in the building and there are no external visitors from other buildings or uh, off-campus students and we know that that is restrictive um, and we hope that you know by the spring semester we're able to back off of that uh, but for the fall semester we we have decided as a university that that is the best option uh, to keep students as safe as possible you know so the university made a decision to allow roommates when we made the decision to allow roommates, we then had to make the decision about students outside of the room. So, you know, students in a, in a suite are considered a family unit. Um, so they will be the only four people in that suite. Um, introducing other people into those spaces increases risk, increases exposure, and it increases the, uh, the contact tracing that would need to be done in the event that one of the students was positive. If okay. we are on campus, we are on campus, can a student meet with another student that's not in their suite and not in their dorm, say they need to do study together? We are on campus. Sure. So um, there are, when I, I know when I say like tents, there are tents all over, but there are like the tents that you would rent for a wedding or a, a large scale event. We have multiple tents that are set up in many areas and they will have, um, you know, they have walls that come down if it's a little breezy or, um, you know, the weather gets colder, but there will be areas on campus that will have uh, Wi-Fi and multiple capabilities. We've increased the Wi-Fi on campus because we know that students are going to be using it outdoors more. Uh, they will be kind of pushed to those areas to meet, to eat outside, to study outside. Um, there will be small opportunities in the library for uh, group and coursework, but uh, again, it will be socially distanced. Uh, Beth, can uh, students receive packages this fall? Uh, because some, some institutions limit and, and do not allow. Really? Well, wow. This is I knew that was an option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, now you gave Beth uh, yep. ideas. I'm like, now you tell me. <laughs> Um, yeah, so yes, students can certainly um, receive packages. It, uh, we advise that if you're sending something, uh, if, if you're buying something through Amazon, that you use the Amazon locker that is in the student center. It's called CRIA, C-R-I-A. Um, that is the easiest and quickest way for a student to receive a package because student center is open on weekends. It's 
it's accessible much later than the residence hall um, uh, mail room is open. So the residence hall mail, mail rooms are really open just from 6 to 9 p.m. So if you send packages to the residence hall, it is going to be delayed in getting to your student. Um, we advise that you would you should send to the the student center bookstore. Uh, so that would be things sent by you know FedEx or um, UPS, but uh, USPS mail will uh, will arrive at the residence hall and we will deliver that to the student. Um, if you are sending anything like money, plane tickets, birth certificates, visas, uh, passports, always send it signature required. Always send it signature required. And that will go to the post office uh, and then your student will receive an email and they will have to sign for it there. Uh, the question is about the a lot of classes being online. It's it's really half of the classes. Our classes are online. Um, the worry is that my student has three sweet mates won't be able to find a place to take her online class if all her sweet mates also have online classes at the same time. Sure. Uh, go ahead. No, I, I mean, I, I can I can certainly understand that concern. Um, I guess my recommendations would be for noise canceling headphones uh, so that the student can participate with, uh, you know, if, if they are in the same space at the same time. Uh, I would also consider using the suite room uh, if your student has a suite, you know, a, a suite with a lounge that maybe the, the lounge space becomes the space that they utilize as a study space or they kind of schedule you know, who's going to be in the bathroom, who's uh, the bedroom, who's going to be in the suite, um, if their class, online classes overlap. Um, but that's definitely something to communicate with, uh, with the roommate on now. What so the, oh, are you reading the, the, I guess the no visitors in room will be by word of, or of honor? Um, so um, I can tell you, I can tell you from 20 years experience, uh, if a student is breaking the rule and having a uh, having guests in the suite, we know about it within a half an hour. <laughs> it's uh, it's something that you know your student is going to text the RA about. They're going to email us about, um, and it will it will be one of those scenarios in which there will only be um, there will be one warning and depending upon uh, how egregious the violation was, it could be a scenario where the student who violated the guest policy is told that they are required to leave residence. Um, the university is, is, not, is not playing games with these policies and procedures. And uh, you know, these have been approved by the president's office. Um, We'll be sending out an email tomorrow to all students to alert them to the stringency of these policies and the ramifications of what will occur. So I, ex I expect that uh, your students will, will understand that it is not something that the university is going to allow. And please have those conversations with your students and really serious conversations. I know that every family differs in opinions about masks, about the rules and regulations, but this is the basics. We have to wear masks. We have to honor all the guest policy rules. Uh, we have to wash our hands and, and follow those basic uh, guidelines. Otherwise, as you know, we have to monitor our COVID, uh, COVID uh, positive cases, and if the uh, infection rate rises, we'll be forced to close. And your mm -hmm. students don't want to be sent home mid-semester. So it's really our behavior. And, and New York State has very low infection rate. We, we came down to 0.7%. It's really amazing. And it, it, social distancing and wearing masks matter. Please tell this to your student. Uh, and, and because those rules will be enforced and we are private university, we, we can suspend students, uh, you know, through the judicial process. Please know that this will be stringently uh, enforced. 
I also just wanted to add in on this to the topic of visitors. I don't see this being a problem because at the entrance of every single residence hall, there's a student representative from public safety that um, has to like watch everyone that comes in. And if you live in the building, you have to swipe in to be able to enter. So if you don't live there, you won't be able to get it. In the past, the, the, the visitors would leave their IDs, but the policy is no visitors. So there, is, there are no uh, non-students allowed in the residence halls. Um, will there be a move out process at the end of the semester or will it be pick up whenever? So um, students do not need to move out at the end of the fall semester unless they are not returning for the spring. So students will, when they leave for the fall semester, they leave their belongings in their, in their room and then they come back for the spring semester. We would certainly advise that students take, you know, their electronics, their medication, passports, you know, any important stuff that they, um, that they may need during the break, but uh, they, they don't need to pack up their belongings and move out for the fall. They, that is their room for the academic year and uh, they'll be returning to it in the spring. Uh, I'm not sure how the um, COVID protocols um, say about this, but Beth, maybe you know. Do students need to wear masks while they're waiting for the COVID test results in their room? No, um, it's, it's impossible. It's an impossible expectation for us to think that uh, anybody could really sleep with a mask on. Um, so it is, you know, please uh, practice uh, mask wearing in your room to the best of your ability while you're awake um, before you receive, you know, before receiving your test result. Um, but while you're sleeping, it's just not, it's not a reasonable thing for us to expect that can happen. If your roommate tests positive, will you both be quarantined and, and retested, the other person be retested? Sure, so if both roommates test positive, well, I'm sorry, if, if one roommate one room. tests positive, yes, the other roommate, um, because that would be considered a close contact, uh, one, the positive student would go to isolation housing and the, um, the close contact would go to quarantine housing. Uh, so they would be in different housing and their, um, their, their case, their medical case would be managed by student health uh, and then you know, they would be retested, um, you know, to student health would retest or manage the testing of the student who is in close contact. Quick question on that one that, that just thought of. So if they do have to go into quarantine housing, will the housing have their bedding or will they need to take their bedding from their room into the quarantine? So we, uh, quarantine housing and isolation housing, we provide linens. Okay. Um, you know, they're, they're not, you know, they're like camp linens, so, okay. you know, <laughs> it's, um, If they're picky on the material, take their own. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, but I can tell you that if they're, you know, we would be working with them pretty quickly to get them out of the space. So, you know, take the, uh, take a pillow, take your, the things that are going to be most important for someone um, who has to move is going to be their electronics so that they can, electronics, medicine, um, so that they can participate in online classes while they're in quarantine or isolation. Okay. And food delivery would be um, provided by Compass to them directly. Those reassurances being an out-of-state parent, knowing I couldn't be sure. right there, so. Yeah, we tr you know, we've provided um, in those spaces health packs and toiletries, and we even have um, clothing if, you know, if a student kind of just very quickly, um, you know, comes back from urgent care and they test positive and we need to get them into that space quickly, we, we kind of have everything available uh, and then we can work out the rest. Uh, Beth, the question is about picking up the, the ill students during the semester. I know that, that parents will be able to come and pick up and the students may recuperate at home. Uh, do, you have to, do you have anything else to add? No, I mean, the thing that I would add is, you know, we have the, we have the space available on campus if you can't, um, but it is absolutely, uh, I mean, your student will be more comfortable at home. So if they can safely be picked up, 
and and brought home, then that is something we would advise. You know, just I mean, what they would have to eat is going to be limited for because of what dining can provide. Um, they're they're going to be in that space maybe alone. You know, it's uh, the building may not have any other occupants in it, and even if it does, they're not able to leave their their bedroom space. So it's a uh, we will care for them to the best of our ability, but obviously um, home care is, is gonna be more comfortable. And we are out of the time. Uh, this is the last question, Beth. Can the uh, beds be bunked in the residence hall room? They cannot. So um, we only will, uh, the beds are typically uh, have about three feet of space underneath. Um, and, you know, two dressers we have two drawer dressers that typically like fit under there perfectly if you don't want that you can put those two dressers on top of each other and use the space under the bed how you want but uh there are too many scenarios in which students have uh, been hurt uh falling off of the top bunk and and we won't we won't do it so um they cannot be for all, uh, first of all, thank you, Beth, for being here for all hour because this is you, the one hour is so precious to you, and I know how busy you are. Thank you so much for answering our yes. questions. And to you, if, if we didn't answer your question, please email parents at hofstra.edu, and we'll we'll find the answers for you. We are learning new things every day. Mm -hmm. uh, check that Safe Start uh, Hofstra page also every day. Thank you. Bye. Take care. And thank you enough for doing this. I have another student at another school not handling it anywhere near as Hofstra is. And thank you. It's <laughs> nice to hear. Thank you. If the email is parents at Hofstra.edu. Correct. Parents at Hofstra.edu. Thank you. Looking forward to a great semester. We are too. Congratulations, Beth, you had a great attendance and thank you again.